The Arizona desert doesn't appeal to a lot of people, and if you're just passing through it, I could see why. In order to really appreciate it in all its beauty, you have to put a little work in to find the best backcountry spots. This weekend, that is exactly what we did. Taking a route of unmarked trails, Kyle and I covered a huge expanse of desert. A 130 mile expanse of dirt roads ripping through desert flats, abandoned ranches and mining camps, and vast canyons along the Gila River. Stay tuned, my name's Cody, and you're watching another episode of the White Dog Overland Experience. Welcome back to another one. Right now we are planted in Middle Mountain, uh, just kind of southeast of Florence area off the uh, Florence Highway. Uh, the old 96 road is just to the south of us and this morning we're going to take that up and shoot it up to an old homestead. This area is quite pretty, slightly trashed. We're on state trust land right now. I'm not exactly sure uh, what this sort of camp spot was. I picked what we could pick last night just because the rain rolled in so early. That's another thing. It's supposed to be raining all day, but there's not really a cloud in the sky right now. It rained all night, um, pretty consistently. It just uh, came down straight for probably four or five hours. Uh, ground is really wet. Clearly no rain right now, so we're uh, up for a good day. Gonna head over to a little homestead here in a couple hours after breakfast, and uh, we'll see you then. Oh uh, yeah, dude, I think this is a pretty big song. We were off to an early start inbound on the old 96 ranch. The roads were wet, but the rain took a brief hiatus allowing us to get packed and get on the road before it made another appearance. This flat desert area may seem dual, but a hundred years ago it would have been bustling with cowboys driving cattle and mining trucks transporting ore from Kelvin to Florence. Although I failed to locate them, there are still wagon tracks along the original Florence-Kelvin Highway made in the early 1900s from the Phoenix Globe stage line. The 96 Ranch Road runs along the Tom Mix Wash, named after the famous western actor Tom Mix who was killed in a crash on the Pinal Parkway in 1940 on the way to a shoot. The 96 Ranch was built in 1936. It was named after the 96 hilltops which encircle the old homestead. There is a recorded 642 acres of grazing land and another 57,000 acres of leased land so you could say at one time this place was pretty big. There is a sign posted prior to the entrance to the ranch and it quotes, Welcome, I am the old 96. Campers, cowboys, and hunters come on in. There are 96 sections to choose from and here the days can be spent walking the mountains or strolling through my scenic flatlands. Every mountain, stream, and valley bears a name. I have ponds where the ducks come to drink and watering tanks for the wildlife, the deer, the javelina, and quail. Of course, my water belongs to all the animals. Old men still come here as they have since they were kids. They come to lose themselves, to sit around crackling fires and tell stories about their adventures on the 96. They talk about when I used to be a working ranch, and of course, about a little bit of hunting that still goes on. During the day, you can watch hawks and eagles perched on saguaros, or flying nickel high above the desert landscape. At night, while sitting by a soothing fire, if you loosen closely, you can hear the animals talk. The Indians were here long before I was born, and if you look in the right places, you will find that their legacy still remains. From the three seas all the way past Rock Mountain to Middle Mountain, there's a half century of history to be found. So come on in, visit an old friend to the people who have been part of me for so many years. I am known as the old 96. Well, the rain is coming in. It's got my hair sticking straight up in the air right now, but let me go check out this, uh, the cabin and see what uh, it looks like on the inside. Seems like it's pretty good shape. Full of bullet holes. Was irrigated. Yeah. Old fuse box. Yeah, so 
I mean, it was built in 37, but seems like it's been updated throughout the years. Surprised all this wiring's not plucked. I sold stone fireplace. Pretty good shape for what it is. It's not totally tagged up. I mean, you got your hooligans every now and then, but roof here and there is in good shape. Had the rain came in early when we got out of bed, we were planning to come over here and uh, cook breakfast, so it would have been pretty nice. Like a four bedroom, four bath. Or sorry, it's like a four bed, one bath. It's the only bathroom I've seen in here. This must have been the kitchen with all the cabinetry. I guess I did see a picture of these stairs. Is it locked or is it open? Whoa. Crazy. Oh, it's pretty flooded out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, the rain has really decided to come back in. It's dropped temperature a lot, sitting at 46. Uh, it's going to be a cold day. But we're going to try to uh, press on towards Winkleman. There's an old cemetery over there. We got time to kill. Uh, can't really gold pan in the rain. So we're going to see if we can eat up some time on dirt and uh, do a little exploration. it back 
back on to the uh, Florence Kelvin Highway. Uh, it's the connective big, you know, two-lane road from uh, Florence to Kelvin and Riverside up here. But we're turning off here shortly to jump onto the Ripsy Trail up to the Ripsy Mine. And it looks like there's still some pretty well-preserved stuff back in there, so I'm kind of itching to see that. But uh, I guess I gotta pop my map open and we'll see you maybe up there. We were finally out of the flatlands and into the more rugged areas as we pushed closer towards the Gila River. Weaving through canyons, we began to climb up towards the Ripsy Mine. The mine started operations sometime in the late 1890s and would sit idle for 10 years until 1911 and then finally stop production in 1941. The primary commodity was copper and silver, but a large amount of gold was also pulled from the mountainside. This is the Ripsy mine. Tracks are still in place, which is pretty cool. We climbed way up this canyon. Not as bad as I was thinking it would be. Pretty, pretty simple, but it's about the end of the road this way. It's an enormous generator. Cummins. Cummins. Yeah, brother. USN. I don't know what US what that is. It's in really good shape. Yeah. Still even got a belt on it. Let's see what the Ripsy shaft has to offer. I hope there's still oh there is still tracks in here. Oh wow. Oh jeez. She go first with the flashlight. That's price she's coming. Okay. Oh. Buff of some sort. It's the brake ram. Right. These tracks are just so neat. This goes way back. I'm sure it goes deep if they had these tracks. Oh, they end. Sketch. Sketch. <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that. Ooh. I really don't like how hollow it feels. Let me see your flash here. Down there. Where does it go? Oh, not far at all. Oh, Wardy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
Come here. Yeah. Sketch, sketch. Look at that oh, shoot. Yeah, shoot going down. Dude, that's, that's cool. so cool. Here's your light. Wow. That goes way up in there. Wow. Man, this is in really well preserved shape. Right? Yeah. Through all their crap. Yeah, it keeps going down that way. That'd be cool. I wonder if some sort of. I don't know. Definitely a pulley up there. There was, might have been something right here, too. Oh, yeah. Anchor Maybe in. another pulley or something. Pulling going those carts up. That way or. Yeah. You know, Man, that's cool. It got really warm. Really dingy. Right. That rope. I don't know. Tubey? Oh. Huh. Wacky. Yeah, when the air changes, I feel like that's. Uh, yeah, I don't go anymore. Into the road. Mm hmm. All right. Look like cannons in the photo. Right. It's like a mill or something. Might be the mill. I could be wrong, but I think the mills do like stages of these dirt levees. Is it still intact? Nah. All right, we are off to find a camp spot. The wind is just absolutely killer right now. It's making this really cold. It's 45, but it feels like it's even less. So I want to get out of that. So we have decided to uh, post up here at the waterfall spot just because uh, this is prime gold panning. Where there's water, you can sift. You don't have to dry sift. I could probably even put my sluice box up in here. And uh, this whole area, I feel like after being washed out for so long, um, there's gonna be a good chance that gold's collected here. So I might dig down, see if I can find some uh, bedrock. I doubt it, but you know, just in this black sand, we might find a little bit of gold. We'll see. couple pans here got the sluice my bigger larger micron uh, strainer didn't come in so we're just gonna have to see what we can pan up but I think putting pans over there is gonna work just fine chilly yeah it's not too bad like hell when i went and took a fucking poop man it was like not bad at all oh it hopefully this, this sun will peak over here shortly yeah Exactly. That's why this one is kind of the way it is. Low lift, smaller roll train.
taking a pretty long detour um, all the way kind of down to the Gila River along the train tracks but we had to split back because the actual uh, let me check my map here the actual uh, road that followed along the train tracks eventually hopped onto the train tracks and uh, as fun as that sounds I'm pretty certain those tracks are still in commission, so that could get a little bit sketchy. Um, don't want to do that. So we we're moving back north, uh, splitting over towards an area called Cochrane. Um, from Cochrane, we are going to uh, get back down onto the Gila and hopefully get some pans in the water. But the road is just, uh, it's just continuously taking these uh, kind of technical turns, which is nice. I haven't really been able to get into anything technical in a while, so this is a good change of pace. The further west we would venture, the more people we would come in contact with. Just on the other side of the river is a very popular trail called Box Canyon, and with the water sitting so low, it was easy for off-roaders to the north to cross over. Unfortunately, it was 99% razors ripping up and down the canyon, blasting god-awful pop country and obnoxiously loud exhaust. I know I rip on side-by-sides a lot in my videos, and it kind of makes me feel like a grumpy old man. But I'm not kidding when I say we maybe saw 60 just near the river and at one point we had to sit on the side of the trail waiting for a disoriented group to find the others who became lost. Alright, so we finally made it down to an accessible point on the Gila. Been kind of straddling it, running it parallel all day, but... We finally made it down, about 15 razors just passed by, so it's a pretty popular area, I guess, but we're going to set up here, uh, get a sluice box in the water, start panning, see what we can find, uh, maybe spend a couple hours here. If we have no luck, we're going to push up to the west uh, to another spot that sits along the Gila and uh, maybe set up camp and do a little more mining. Oh, yeah, so sick. Printed photos. Can't get no peace around here with all these freaking razors. One after another. I just want to mine my golden piece. All right, so now that we ran a couple of uh, pans through the sluice box, I'm going to pull the carpet out, wring it out into my pan, and then try to refine it from there. Yeah, loads of black sand. So there is definitely gold in this river. Um, when I pulled the carpet out of the sluice box, I could see some little little plaster specks. So I'm thinking if I get this refined down, I might find some uh, you know decent little specimens. But if not, I'm gonna try another sluice run, and then uh, maybe we'll run up the river and see if we can find any better bedrock. Cause there's not a lot of bedrock down here, and that's kind of what you need to look for. Like maybe down in there there's maybe micro specs but it's hard to tell it sure is well there's uh, not really much gold and there's uh, too many razors so I think we're gonna move on to the next spot and try it over there
I was pretty sick of being surrounded by all the people and shenanigans. I knew if we stayed along one of the featured trails, we would be pestered by exhaust all night, so I found an unmarked road that would loop us around the South Butte and down to the river. I had no idea what I was getting this rig into, but I'll tell you what, it was well worth it in the end. Well, I think I might have just gotten my first bit of body damage on the Tundra. Oh, let's see. Oh yeah, crunch. Yeah, that was a big boulder. It's a, it's a good one. This uh, road has gotten really shelfy. Yeah, dude, it's a good crunch. And uh, we crunched her right there. But this road is just really tight. It's nah. It's not that bad. No. It's just a little. Mostly just this guy. I can pop the fender out. Just pop that out. It's strange how much fires can impact and demolish a trail. A few years ago, a very destructive burn came through this canyon and left a huge scar, one that would make it quite difficult for the tundra to pass through. Nevertheless, with a bit of patience, we made it through. This trail is wicked tight for this truck. I mean, it is vastly overgrown. And uh, we are just kind of barreling through here, one branch at a time, one obstacle at a time. God, this shell is just getting beaten. I don't like that at all. This is a uh, really, really pretty brutal one. Like that just sucks, but um, that doesn't, and that doesn't over there. So uh, this is one of those that I guess is worth the pain, we'll say. Gonna be tight, dude. A little passenger. Yeah, keep it that direction. 
little driver, just that smidgen, tiniest smidgen. Keep coming, keep coming. Dude, that whole shelf road coming along in here. That was cool, dude. That so was really cool. cool. What are you making? Fucking Because the tundra struggled so much on that last little tree section that was really tight, we decided it probably won't make it back through other than backing out because my awning is on one side, it just gets in the way. So we cleared this section out, we're going to kind of bushwhack it through around here and we have one more section to clear and then we're back on the actual trail so I can avoid uh, more serious damage to the uh, foot pack because I've really been trying to avoid that but pretty hard on trails like this.